Well, good morning, boys and girls. My name is Miss Smothers, and today I'm going to be reading for you. How many of you have heard the story about the three little pigs? Okay, so each one of you think you know the story about the three little pigs. Oh, you know you know the story. All right. Well, today what we're going to do, we're going to get the side of the story about the three little pigs from the wolf. Let's see what the wolf has to say about it. The true story of the three little pigs. And it is by a wolf. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let, I'm, I will let you know a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard it from me, my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf, but you can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. This is the wolf. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. This is the big cheeseburger, and of course that's the wolf. That's a big cheeseburger. <laughs> I think that's a little too big. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. That's the cup of sugar and uh, about the sneeze that he's getting ready to tell you about. This is the real story. Remember, this is being told from the wolf's point of view. And his name is, what is his name? Alexander T. Wolf. Wolf. All right. Way back in Once Upon a Time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold, and I ran out of sugar. That's him making a birthday cake for his old granny. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built the whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? Nah, nobody would do a thing like that. I mean, who in his right mind would build a house out of straw? It wasn't too bright, was it? That's the wolf walking down the street to his neighbor's house made out of straw. So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it felt right in. The door just caved in. I didn't want to just walk in into somebody else's house, so I called. Little pig, little pig, are you in? Nobody answered. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my old dear granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. <laughs> a sneeze, I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed <laughs> and I huffed and I puffed. That's the wolf and his big sneeze. And a great sneeze came out of the wolf. That's what happened to the straw house. And you know what? The whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doughnail. That's the pig in the middle of the straw. He had been home the whole time. The whole time the pig, was, the, the wolf was out there knocking, the pig was there, but he just didn't answer the door. It seemed like a shame to leave a pretty good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So, I ate it. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. Just like this child said that she would like to eat it. Well, he decided to eat the pig because the pig was just there. <laughs> I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not that much. He had built his house out of Sticks. That's the house made of sticks that the second brother 
built his house out of. And the, and the wolf is there now. He's headed down there to this neighbor. So I rang the doorbell on the stick house, but nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, hey, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in here. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. <laughs> so the pig was in there shaving his hair off of his face. He was in the house, but he didn't answer the, I mean, he, he answered him, but he said, hey, leave me alone right now, I'm busy. <laughs> I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I hopped in a sneeze. And I tried to cut my mouth, but I sneezed, a great sneeze. And we know what happened. And you are not going to believe it. But this guy's house fell down, just like his brother did. When the dust had cleared, there was a second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. The wolf is really telling the truth. He was dead in the middle. Now. You know, food will spoil if you leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing that was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, though, after eating two pigs. Think of it as a second helping. I was really, really, really full. But my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family because you know what he did? He built his house out of brick. I knocked on the pigs, on the pig's house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And you know what? That rude little poker answered. Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. He wasn't too happy, was he, to have the wolf knocking at his door, especially after he had already blown his two brothers' houses down. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear, sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake. When I felt my cold coming on again, uh -huh, and I sneezed, and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pen. Apparently the pig was, he was pretty, pretty mad because the wolf had just blown his house down. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I get a little crazy. You can't diss my family. That's what the wolf is saying. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. That's the wolf in the house that he just uh, decided to blow up with his big, powerful sneeze. Well, y'all know the rest of the story's history. This was the newspaper. It said, Big Bad Wolf, and that's how he got that bad rap. He really didn't do anything wrong in his opinion. A.T. Wolf, big and bad, and it really makes the, pig, the um, wolf looks bad. The news reporters found out about the two pigs. I had dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jabbed up the story with all that huffing and puffing and blowing your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. That's the real story. The wolf was framed. And remember, all this is coming from the, from the um, mouth of the wolf. But maybe you can loan me a cup of sugar. He went to jail. That's the wolf. And that's the real story of the three little pigs. Yeah, yeah so that's it. Right, he was sneezing and he had a cold. He really didn't, uh, according to the wolf, he really did not go there to, to eat the pigs or to blow their houses down. It was an accident, is Except what he's saying. The third pig. Well, the third pig, he got a little, he got a little mad at the third pig after he was dissing his family. You can't do that.
Oh, is that what happened? Oh, okay. Yes, sir. He was pretty hungry, huh? He could do all that eating. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed the story. I enjoyed reading to y'all. Do y'all have the opportunity to read often at home yes. to your parents? Read 30 minutes. You read 30 minutes? You can read longer than that. You can read without having an assignment. Just read for pleasure. Reading is where the knowledge is. So you can learn and go anywhere you want to in a book. So please take the opportunity to read. Even if you cannot find a person to read to or don't feel like reading out loud to yourself, read out loud to your animals. If you have a dog, dogs really like to listen. You know, you see them sometimes, they turn their head if you're talking to them. They, they want to be read to, too. So uh, many of you, I'm sure, have animals. Read to them. Read, read, read. What happened? Dog come running downstairs, twirling. Twirl. Happy dog, happy to see you. Well, that's great. But y'all, uh, please thank y'all very much for having listened, and we will be around to talk to y'all later. Have a great rest of the day.